So today, I'm going to go ahead and continue the series that my wife and I have been putting together regarding the dirty little secrets of graphic design. If you haven't watched the other videos, uh, I recommend you do. I'll leave a link in the description. So today's video will be about rejection. I don't know if you saw my other video the other day about the logo fail for the bakery. I touch on the idea of rejection in that video because my logos got rejected. And I said in that video that, you know, even though I've been doing this a long time, it still is not fun when your work is just rejected. When I was in design school, we would put our work up on the board and a group of designers would sit around and it's called a critique. I don't know if they still do that in school, but they did when I was coming up. And when I, I, I knew nothing about graphic design when I started, I knew nothing. I just knew that it was cool and I wanted to do it. I had no idea what I was doing whatsoever. And, you know, to be honest, I was a little lazy and I was a little half-hearted. When I put my first couple of works up on the board, I was shattered. I mean, it was shattered. You name another business where you put your work up on a board and your colleagues pick it apart. Everybody tries to be nice. And for the most part, people are, they're constructive, but still it's your work and it's very hard. And that's part of this business. And that is a dirty little secret that as a designer, you have to learn how to get over that. You have to learn to handle your emotions because in today's world, with all these tools out there like Wix and Photoshop, WordPress, Illustrator, Affinity, there are those out there because they open up Photoshop and they know how to create a document that they're an expert. They haven't spent a day in a typography class. They haven't spent a day learning about color theory or what makes a composition a good composition as opposed to a bad composition? What's the difference between an amateurish layout and someone who really understands the rules and is breaking the rules to where other designers are going, oh my Lord, that's awesome. Why didn't I think of that? Because they're out there. If you be in this business and you've been doing this a while, I guarantee you have pulled up a logo or you have pulled up an ad or you've pulled up a poster or something, web page, commercial, whatever, and you're just slapping your forehead going, oh, that is so cool. Why didn't I think of that? Because it's so simple. It's so elegant. It breaks the rules and it's so concise. It doesn't necessarily break the rules, but certainly bends them. And you are just, oh man, that's amazing. And these folks who have Photoshop are standing over your shoulder telling you how to do it. My wife ran into a situation where a designer she knew that she was working with basically came to her and said, who is my boss? <laughs> Which I just, I had to laugh. It's like, good for him, good for him. You cannot tell me, here's the dirty little secret that the designers out there who are listening to this understand. Who is my boss here? Why does this person get to critique my work? They're not even on the team. They're not even on the project. They weren't at the meeting. They don't know what the client said. And yet they come along and rip your work to shreds. And it's tough. It's tough. I had a client a couple months ago, sold his business. The new owner took over and the previous owner and I spent months working on the website just the way she wanted it. And this guy comes in and says, well, the website's okay, I guess. And it's just like, geez, dude, you don't even know the people involved with this. You have no idea the blood, sweat, and tears that she put into that. And here you are in the first 10 minutes of getting to know you, you say something completely inappropriate and disrespectful to the people who come before you. But that's the business. You're gonna get that a ton, a ton. People will stand over your shoulder. They have no idea what color theory is. They have no idea what composition is. They have no idea 
way typography is about, and they will give you their opinion. And the kicker is, sometimes their opinion is what matters. We had another client that insisted that we create a cartoon superhero logo for their company. I couldn't believe it. This was after giving him over 50 looks that they had yet to pay for, going down a path that he insisted that we go down, had to keep the previous legacy icons, had to keep the previous legacy colors, and then does a complete 180 and wants something brand new. Man, that was tough. That was tough. So your work will be rejected. You will be put on the spot and it's gonna hurt and it's gonna be hard to handle. You're gonna have those days. But what do you do? What do you do? So these videos aren't just about, you know, whining about the problem. What's the solution? Well, here's what I wish that somebody had told me early on that I'm telling you. This resonated with me. Graphic design is not about your artistic expression. It's about effective communication. And when you start thinking of it along the lines of, it's just another tool. You want to be an artist? Go be an artist. You want to be a graphic artist or a graphic designer? Understand that you're communicating. You're saying something to somebody who looks at your piece. And along that comes with that is you need to be flexible and adaptable. You need to embrace the changes and adjustments to your creative ideas. You are only one part of the solution. The other thing that really, really helped me is my wife taught me the difference between feeling criticized and recognizing that feedback is a tool that helps point the design in the right direction. You may not necessarily agree with the direction, but it certainly is pointing it in the right direction for the client. Here's the other thing that I've learned for myself is you're getting paid. They make changes. That's more work for you. When you're freelance and you're living from client to client to client to client, the more work you can get, the better off your bottom line is. And I had to make these mental adjustments along the way. Now it took a few years, no doubt, because it's hard. It's absolutely hard. So what else can you do? Well, talk to your client up front. That's the other thing that we learned is my wife got really, really good at vetting our clients before I put pen to paper, before I started sketching ideas or throwing things down in Photoshop or whatever. My wife would vet these clients, created our own sheet. Now, you can download project spec sheets, you know, and ask all the questions of who's your audience. You can watch these videos of you know, you have to vet your client, you have to ask all these questions or you're gonna, be... that never worked for us. And that's dirty secret number two in this video, is that never worked for us. The clients that we work with, they never wanted to fill out a project spec sheet. And if they were, if they had somebody fill it out, it was a person who wasn't the leader, it wasn't the decision maker, it was the decision maker's assistant's assistant or cousin or brother's half sister, you know, the accountant who got dumped on her desk. Those were the people who were filling out the project spec sheet. And that does you no good as the designer because you have to get in front of the decision maker. But the biggest thing is that it's, again, go back to my previous videos. It's not about you. It's not about you. You sometimes are the person who works Photoshop. They have a vision that they want to get out of their head. And the only thing that you can do is guide them to the best of your ability. One of the greatest tools that we ever learned was letting our client fail, giving them exactly what they asked for, making recommendations along the way, saying, we're going to happily do it the way you want. We recommend that you go in this direction, but you're signing our paycheck, so we're going to do whatever you ask us to do. And I cannot tell you how many times a client has come back hat in hand and said, well, I guess that wasn't as successful as we thought. 
and you can't gloat. Just say, well, you know, it takes a team. We didn't know. We're here together, working on this together. Listening to ideas of non-professionals is tough. Heck, listening to other designers critique your work is tough, let alone listening to people who have no idea, who don't understand that you are communicating. They haven't studied typography. They haven't studied composition. They haven't studied color theory like you have. And I'm telling you time and time and time again, this business is all about compromise. You are coming up with solutions all the time. Call it compromise, call it coming up with a new solution. Someone's feedback that you don't agree with is just yet another design parameter that you need to find a solution for. Acceptance is huge. That every idea that you come up with, because I gotta tell you, in my years of being a designer, sometimes, you know, whether I like it or not, it's somebody gives me a spec or an idea and I'm just dry. There's nothing there. I, I got nothing. <laughs> it's like, okay, I got nothing. What am I going to do? So all of your ideas are not going to be winners. It does take a team and they're certainly not going to be accepted outright. When you put massive change down in media, if your ideas, are grand and concise and clear cut and they communicate and they cut through all the clutter, your client will be overwhelmed. Your client will be overwhelmed and they will reject your work outright. Not because the work is bad, it's because they're overwhelmed. And we talk about that. That's in our next video. We, t we go into depth about that which I never knew. I had no idea that you could overwhelm a client with something that looks amazing, but it happens all the time. So these are just some of the things that we've learned that are dirty little secrets. You know, I don't see a lot of these YouTube videos where they sit there and they tell the designer, listen, pick yourself up. You're going to get kicked in the jaw. You're going to be told that your work sucks by people who have no idea what they're talking about. And you got to go to work the next day and you got to create and that well of creativity can sometimes run dry especially if you're being told that your work is substandard it's hard to pick yourself up that's why we're here you're not alone that's part of the business a lot of these youtube videos will tell you you got to do this and you got to do that and it's just complete hogwash you put your best you on the page given this par parameters that the client outlays for you and you just give it your best and guess what it's going to evolve. It's going to change. Be flexible. Okay. But this, all this idea that if you don't do this and you don't do that, you're not going to get here and you're not going to get there. It's hogwash. It's absolute hogwash. It is not true. That is their story. That is their journey. That is not your journey. That is not my journey. My journey has been people are flexible. If you're flexible, if you go into the situation tight, demanding, you're going to get that right back. It's the same way if you travel to another country and you're a loud mouth jerk thinking that you have to push your way through like it's some place in America, you're going to get treated like the American. But if you go with hat in hand and you're humble and you embrace the culture, you're going to have a completely different experience. And it took me a long time. When I got out of design school, I thought that I just get clients. I'm going to design their stuff. It's going to be cool and amazing. And boy, it was, but it was also tough too. And here's the, here's the kicker. Sometimes you will throw something together that you just did for fun as a warm up exercise. And it turns out to be amazing to the client. And it was a throwaway to you. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, just do your best you. You never know what's going to hit. Okay, well, that's what I got for today. I hope you learned something. I hope you like videos like this. And if you do, you know, leave a comment. Please subscribe. I certainly appreciate it. So that way I can continue to make videos like this for you. All right. Well, you have a great day. Thanks for stopping by and you take care. All right. Bye-bye. Do you find yourself spending countless hours maintaining your website? It can be time-consuming and stressful, taking away from the things you really want to be doing. That's where we come in. 
Our web maintenance services can take care of all the technical details, giving you more free time to focus on what really matters. Imagine having extra time to spend with your family, pursue your hobbies, or even just relax. Let us take care of your website and give yourself the gift of more free time. Contact us today at simplyweb.me. That's simplyweb.me.